This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! I can't believe we're going to be in a movie. I heard that they're bringing in a robot so big, he's basically his own planet. Plotting my demise as usual, Starscream? Not at all. The Hasbro executives are coming today to discuss our roles in the new movie since the toys are selling based on us are doing so well. Movie, eh? Well, if it's gonna be any good, we better be destroying the whole of the Autobot army this time. I'm getting so sick of all of our shots missing everything in this disaster they call a show. It's entirely logical that they may reduce our numbers as well, if nothing more than to even the stakes. Don't be ridiculous, Shockwave. The Autobots are weaklings. There's no way they could take us down. All right, Decepticons. We finished the script and... Oof! Are you all right there? Hopefully, for your sake, you've made us the instruments of destruction we truly are! Well, uh, see for yourself. Attack the Autobots. Looking good so far. Hey, I got to kill Ironhide. <laughs> it's about time. Devastator gets a big scene. He'll like that. I bet he would. What do I get? Uh, seems like you get to wield me and take out Ratchet and Brawn. Yes! Hey! What's the big idea? It says Optimus gets the better of me, and then I only get to take him out because of a cheap shot! Then I die?! Yup. It's been two years of your toy in North America. Everyone that wanted one has bought him already, and sales are stagnating. We have to replace you somehow. Replaced? NOBODY REPLACES MEGATRON! Well, hold on a minute, your lordship. You're not the only Season 1 character being let go here. Don't go thinking you're special. Wait, wait a minute. We're all getting replaced? Skywarp, you might want to get in here. You called? Yeah. Turns out we're getting killed off. What? You're killing me off? As I explained, sales are stagnating. We have to buy new characters. New Autobots are all lined up and we're still doing casting calls for new Decepticons. But the point remains, we can't keep the guys on anymore. Does that mean Thundercracker too? Yep. Hold on, I'm a blue jet. I basically print money from seven-year-olds. Sales data is never wrong. I suppose the logical question to ask then is who is all remaining? Well, sales are up for Soundwave and Starscream, so we're considering making him the leader of the Decepticons. Yes! What? It's about time! This is outrageous! Take that, almighty oh Megatron! I will finally be the new leader of the Decepticons! You couldn't lead heads to a picnic, Starscream! How in the world do you become leader? Well, after the battle, the Decepticons are going to eject all the Season 1 characters from Master Train while in space in this emotional send-off. And the rest of the Decepticons reluctantly relinquish leadership to Starscream, realizing that he's the real leader they all need in this difficult time. <laughs> what? Stop laughing! Hey, did you just say a we all need? Oh, oh man! Oh, man! Oh, man! Oh, man! Oh, Look, uh, can I offer some uh, suggestions so we can stay on? Well, what did you have in mind? Well, how about instead of killing us off, we just get rebuilt into better robots? That's... not a... Bad idea, actually. What? No! This script is perfect! Don't you dare change a thing! Hang on, Starscream. Trust me on this one. I'll make sure you still get your coronation scene. You better! Because if I don't get my lead as the head of the Decepticons, I'm taking it out on you! Oh, don't get your coronation, alright. Coronation, Starscream! This is bad comedy. Megatron, is that you? Here's a hint! Calvatron transforms into his space cannon and blasts Starscream into a brittle husk that crumbles to ashes. Thundercracker, this is gold! Have you ever considered becoming a screenwriter? Why, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow. It's a long overdue review to finally complete my coverage of Earthrise Wave 1. This is the review for Earthrise Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp. The iconic trio of jets that totally wasn't a cash grab back in the 80s to make us buy the same toy thrice, and definitely isn't what's done today. 
That aside, this is the first time in three years that I've even had the complete trio, so I will admit that's super nice. And for the first time ever, it's also really nice that I actually have an official Skywarp. Yes, no more knockoffs, custom repainted MP11s, or knockoff MP11s. This is the real deal, which also makes me wonder why it took so long to crack out a mainline Skywarp. And that's not to say mainline Skywarps haven't existed, but all things considered, he tends to be the hardest of the trio to acquire. Being at the end of lines, meaning most places won't stock them until they clear out the existing stock, which never happens. Force multi-figure packs that require you to buy a bunch of figures you don't want. Exclusives, or in this case, all of the above. In this case, however, Hasbro seems to have done the actually smart thing, and that was Bundle Skywarp with Thundercracker. Which, I mean, chances are, unless you're a diehard collector with a Skywarp Shrine, you're going to be hunting for both of them to complete the trio. May as well make it so that if you find one, you find the other. And these guys, all of them, I will admit look mostly great. Mostly, though. Here's what is great about them. It's awesome to see for the first time officially, not counting Masterpiece, that they actually get to be F-15s again for the first time in about a decade and a half. Considering this is Earthrise and everything has been par for the course in terms of close but not quite vehicles, I figured there'd be some huge deviation that's like, whoops, sorry McDonald Douglas, it's not quite the F-15, so, you know, don't have much of a legal case here. And I'm throwing this out there now, I don't know planes like I know my cars. I'm doing my best on the research I've done and for talking to a few people that are avid aviation enthusiasts, so hopefully I'm accurate, but here we go. Here's what I can see. Stabilizers are slightly too long and the cockpit is a little too short height-wise and a little long length-wise. I'm told this is a little more F-14 than it is F-15 and I'm gonna have to take their word for it. Neither of these things are the end of the world and had I not looked it up, I wouldn't have even noticed. But it is something. Anything else is a robot mode compromise. Well, something that I think could have been slightly changed are the intake ramps. For subsonic flight, these are accurate, like just straight out and all that. But once the plate needs to go supersonic, these ramps angle themselves down to limit the air intake as it passes through substantially more air while it flies, which would mess with the air-fuel ratio. Well, no, I'm not saying these should have been adjustable, as nice as that would have been. I just think it would have been cool to have them angled down a bit for two reasons. One, it implies the Seekers like to fly at supersonic speeds. Two, in the cartoon, when in robot mode, they angle down anyway. This is like the most insignificant nitpick. At the end of the day, it's fine that they're straight out. I just think it would have been neat. I mean, we were all right with it way back in the 80s, as well as the classics toy from 15 years ago. I think we can live with that now. Speaking of the classic toy, let's compare. It's no secret that Earthrise Starscream and all of its endless repaints and tools and whatnot is more or less the CAD files of classic Starscream, upscaled to Voyager and tweaked a bit to make the robot mode much better than what it used to be. As such, the F-15 mode gets to suffer a little bit. Like, look at this curve that they molded into the arms of the classics. It's gone. These used to be extra detail that was present in this and the first version of the masterpiece to make it more resemble the F-15E Strike Eagle with extra conformal fuel tanks. And now with their absence, it's more like the F-15J. It's a little thing, I know, but it saddens me a bit anyway. Other things that make it more resemble the J variant include the placement of the 5mm port for the missile pods and the single seat. According to my source, anyway. I in no way claim to be an aviation expert. Other changes include darkening the grey color used for the main body to closely resemble the cartoon aesthetic more, as well as the lightening of the blue and other minor color adjustments for a more accurate cartoony experience. I think it looks great. Something else they did to make things more cartoon accurate are the Decepticon symbols. They're oriented this way, similar how the Universe toy did it, and I'm also told this is real world accurate, but I'll get into that in a bit. As is, I think these look great. Problems start to present themselves though once you start looking at the other figures. Like, Starscream, yes, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's Starscream. He's got that great shade of grey and the light blue and the red. They really bring themselves out and contrast themselves so nicely. But then you get to the villains two pack and it's like, did they just forget to finish the figure or, or what? It kind of looks more or less like the bare bones figure with a striping on the wings and that's... Oh wait, there are Decepticon symbols here. It's just that they blend way too easily into the wings. And the biggest offense of all is the stabilizers are also just left blank. Is this cartoon accurate? <laughs> you bet it is. But so is this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Face plateless Optimus when Hasbro. My problem is this just looks boring. The Decepticon logos blend into the wings, making the wings look just as boring. Again, I don't get the whole cartoon accurate to a fault business. It's kind of just getting more and more out of hand these days. Other points of cartoon accuracy, and this one's going to be a bit more of a controversial take, I'm not really a fan of the baby blue they made Thundercracker. I personally prefer the shade they had on the toy with that rich dark blue, and the one the Generation Thundercracker pulled off beautifully. Even Ion Storm here has a better shade of blue than Thundercracker, I find. This was done in the name of cartoon accuracy. 
I get it. I don't like it, but I understand why they did, and fair enough. The one thing I really don't get, seeing as how we have all three of these here, is the way the engines were handled. Like, Chug Mold? Wonderful engine detail at the back. And on the Earthrise Mold, we get the weird-looking clamshells. These are designed to give heel support to the robot mode, and fine, sure, whatever. There's a better way to do it, but we'll talk about that later. An argument could be made that they resemble the rectangular shape of the F-22's engine's details, which is... weird. But whether this was intentional or not, I feel like the biggest missed opportunity is that there's nowhere to plug any of the blast effects. The Siege one had five whole places to make it look like the afterburners were just going nuts, and the only way to properly do that on the Earthrise is to flip up the heels, completely ruining the image of the jet, and plugging in two blast effects meaning that said jet blasts are also coming above the main body of the plane, which is just... so many levels of stupid. So of everything I just complained about, not all of it is a lost cause, as at least some of my gripes about aesthetics can be fixed. Grabbing an airbrush and some masking tape, I set to work adding stabilizer stripes to the villain's two-pack to unify them all as a set and bring at least some visually appealing look to the originally bland jets. While I was at it, I removed the symbols off all three of the wings with some rubbing alcohol and replaced them with some silver back toy hacks labels while also flipping them upside down. Some people are going to cry sacrilege at this, and fair enough, feel free to keep yours as they were. In this instance, I'm more than happy to give the robot mode priority here. Much like Cliff Jumper, I really doubt it's going to matter which way it's oriented. I mean, yes, they're oriented this way at all because in the real world they're like this so that planes flying above them can identify by looking at their wings, but given their Decepticons, my headcanon is they don't really care whether or not they blend in. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Tango 4-2 to base, I finally cut out to the radar blip we had. Tango 4-2, what do you see? Well, there's two jets here. Uh, let's see. Both of them have Decepticon logos, sir. Decepticons? In our airspace? I wonder what they want. Not sure, they're just... Wait! One of them has an upside-down insignia! Tangle 4-2, engage, engage, engage! Uh... That aside, no matter which orientation you have them in, I really do feel that at least Thundercracker and Skywarp really could have benefited from having their logos be outlined in some contrasting color to make them pop a bit more. But, again, slavish adherence to a really cheaply made show as to take full priority over any artistic liberty as usual. For size comparison, Studio Series Shatter, Transformers Prime Deluxe Soundwave, and Uniclacerations Thundercracker. And considering the wingspan of a Harrier is about 70% the wingspan of the F-15s and Jet Mode Shatter is 87% the wingspan, Deluxe Shatter is slightly too big scale-wise compared to a Voyager F-15, which is kind of weird when you think about it. On the Autobot side of things, combine awards Power Glide, Slingshot, and Silverbolt, which is obviously too small for the Warthog, really close for the Harrier at 66% of the wingspan of the F-15, which makes it a little small, but like, really, really close, which sort of puts Air Raid into perspective and all kinds of nope for the stylized Concorde. And finally, Siege, Jetfire, and Earthrise, Skylinks, or Sky, or whatever. Against the cartoon-accurate made-up jet mode of Jetfire, I'd say that's pretty good. Against Skylinks? No. We would need a legend-sized plane for that to be anywhere near close, but... Oh well, what are you gonna do? Now for the overly nerdy side of things. Years ago, I was looking into making HO scale F-15s from a model railway for the fun of it. Thought about using Generation Seekers for this, but upon measuring, I discovered they were way too small. Somewhere in the ballpark of 1-100 scale, which is close-ish, but I knew it really wouldn't work. So when I got Earthray Starscream, I busted out my calipers and discovered a 15.02 centimeter wingspan. A real F-15 has a wingspan of 13 meters. So we just take 13 meters, divide it by 0 0.1502 meters, and we get Earthrise Starscream is 1 to 86.55 scale. What? That's like more than close enough. That's so close to bang on HO scale, it's ridiculous. Was this a happy accident? Undoubtedly. But look, that means we get an accurate look into what a seeker would look like next to other vehicles. Because unlike MPB that scales everything, we have an actual jet that gets to scale proportionately to other things within my HO scale models. So that means Earthrise Starscream scales properly next to this railroad track. This custom painted Kenilworth K100 Aerodyne sleeper cab and trailer with accompanying Tyrell P34, Ferrari 308 GTB, Porsche 928, and Lamborghini Countach all custom painted and submitted by Rob Dane. This Astro Tender. This incomplete chassis for a JNR D51 on standard gauge rails I'm doing. 
I was hoping to have it done for this review, but I'm having electrical problems. This G1 Astro Train is, believe it or not, HO scale, as this would be the scale of a D51 considering it runs on a Japanese narrow gauge railway. This Tyco Transformers train set featuring a Plymouth Switcher unit, coal car, boxcar, and caboose, all of which transform in some capacity or another, and definitely wasn't just a reused mass playset with a Transformer sticker on it. This HO scale Freightliner FLT 9664 with accompanying Porsche 935, Lamborghini Countach, modified Countach, 1972 Corvette C3, Volkswagen Beetles Hype 1, and Porsche 945. Four, all of which custom printed or painted by me. It's just... Ah, this is nuts! I'm a huge scale junkie. While I get nothing scaled in the cartoon or toys or whatever, and I'm not wanting that things aren't in scale, it's just super, super cool to me to see all of this like this. To see where the cars, trucks, planes, trains, all of it would just scale in relation to each other. To see what Thomas and friends look like next to Transformers and where their vehicles would all scale. Want to see where a person would stack up to all this? A guy named Enzo on Instagram, or my name is Bumblebee on YouTube, sent me a picture of him next to his Volkswagen Beetle. So we take that, crop him, and bam! There's a 5'7 guy to reference you up to what these all should be. I just honestly can't believe how close it's lined up with 187 scale. And I am just so dang happy to have these as not just the secrets from my main generations line, but also as scale jets for my train set. It's just so cool! That being said, size comparisons with other Transformers vehicle modes. We got Cliff Jumper, Sideswipe, Optimus. Well, what do you want me to say? Water's wet, grass is green, sky is blue, Transformers don't scale, and neither do you. As for accessories, they all get null rays. They're seekers. It's just how it is. And they all plug up on top in the middle of the plane. Kind of annoying how they give you two null rays with only one spot to put them up here when not in robot mode, but Hasbro's gonna Hasbro, I guess. So yeah, that's my review of Jet Mode. I mean, they're not perfect seekers, and certainly not the best takes on their alt modes that I personally have seen, but as far as colors go, especially after a bit of paint, I think they look pretty good. I love what they've done to Starscream, being in his proper gray with a light blue and red. Seeing Skywarp with his deep purple against the black is just such a sight to behold, and I fully understand why anybody would be nuts over this seeker specifically. And Thundercracker, being that he's my favorite of the three, it is a little disappointing the color blue they use for him but I get why they did, and I just personally can't be bothered to tear apart an entire figure just for a slightly more saturated shade of blue. And the fact they just happened to scale with HO? Awesome! We're going to take a quick commercial break, though, and then we're going to get to tackle the monstrosity that is the robot mode. Stay tuned! The Transformers will return after these messages. Oh, darn it. What's wrong, Brad? I'm trying to buy more of our Autobots from online retailers, but it's just too dang expensive. Have you tried our MatrixDFM.com? No. As a matter of fact, I haven't. What is it? It's an online marketplace devoted to the sale of all things Transformers based out of the United States. Prices are cheaper there as the selling fees are lower than prices like eBay, but because they still use PayPal, you get the same buyer protection as you would on eBay, with free shipping on all orders within the U.S. That sounds pretty good, but what if I have something just taking up space around here and I want to sell it? Well, you can do that too. Account creation is free, and any sale or order you make enters you in a giveaway on the site. That sounds awesome. Ah, uh, MatrixTFM.com. Go start selling today for free! We now return to the Transformers. Alrighty, Transformation. As mentioned before, this is basically Uniclasseration Seeker 2.0, so a lot of the Transformation cues are going to be the same. Start by removing the null rays. Then you flip the wings and fins, and rotate the heels and fins down. Flip up the toes, open the crotch plate, open the shin panels, and extend the legs combiner war style. And this next part is extremely important. I missed it because I looked at this and thought, psh, I don't need instructions, and complained because the legs were falling apart every time I bent the knees until someone in my Earthrise rant fast explained this to me. This peg here, that needs to peg into this slot here. Otherwise, the knees end up being unsecured and therefore terrible. It's a really nice solution to this problem, and I'm wondering if it was added because the designers were having the problem in the first place. Anyway, close up the shin panels, fold down the crotch plate, open up the chest by bending the entirety of the chest piece around that tabs into the shoulders and top of the chest. I really don't like how this needs to move. It's a weird flex, but okay. Pull the shoulders out, open up the fronts of the arms, pull down the forearms, and close it all back up while folding down the hands. 
pull down the cockpit, spin it around, and slot it into the waist while closing everything up. And now it's time for everyone's favorite step. Fold down the nose cone and drape it off the back of the robot mode. Replace the null rays and we be finished. And here we are in robot mode, with a fantastically wonderful glaring issue. Head sculpts. I don't know if it's upper management saying, No, 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 they can't be all the same. People will see right through our repaint cash grab. Or what, but... I don't have a clue why they all have the same head except Skywarp who gets to look like the subject in Edward Munch's painting. Like you get neutral face, neutral face, and a tap to close your yap face. If anything, shouldn't there just be an iconic smirk and give that to Starscream and call it a day in the head sculpt department? In any case, I ended up getting a second Starscream and not only swapped the heads to put the scream in the Starscream, but also blocked out the mouth cavity to really highlight the mouth was open. And showing this off also showcases the difference in the insignias. Personal preference, I don't like them upside down. Cartoon, real world accurate, whatever, I just don't like it. And even the Siege, small as it was, got these right side up, so I stuck with right side up for my placement of the new vinyl insignias. Other modifications mainly seen in robot mode include painting purple and red here on the abdomen of the villain's back. This is accurate to nothing, and it's really just inspired off the Generation Thundercracker, but I thought it was a really neat little addition to the Generations to contrast the vast amounts of blue, and I liked it so much that I did it the same to Skywarp. Will I do it to Starscream? Not sure yet, but I still think it's a neat addition. Alright, given that this is, again, Oversized Uniclass Ration Seeker 2.0, let's compare to that, because this really has been improved on, and I think it deserves a look at where it comes from. First off, we get proper null rays instead of the spring-loaded ones, which, fun fact, are exactly the same length. It's just that apparently the spring-loaded ones were intended for Voyager-sized figures. The new design of the arms lengths and ends be more proportionate with the robot mode instead of these single, hinged, stumpy arms of the 15-year-old design. The placement of the stabilizers and elevators are identical, however, the new way they did the toes means they don't look so long. And the addition of heel support makes this a much more stable figure, as I remember these chug seekers were notorious for falling backwards. The thigh redesign has made the legs slightly more ranged in their movement, and a little more proportionate. The big huge gap in the chest has been a little more covered, so it's not as glaring as it was back then thanks to the new design of the shoulders. A notch was cut into the back of the plane and molded into the cockpit area to allow the nose cone to sit a little further into the body so as not to stick so high up in the back, so that's kinda nice. And by sacrificing the clean aesthetic of the nose cone, they also made sure the head is on a separate ball joint so that it wasn't limited to the left and right by a hinge at the back. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like this isn't an updated version of a 15-year-old design with slightly better articulation and aesthetics. Because it is. It is slightly better. I'm so glad they took the time to dig out 15-year-old CAD files to tweak and improve a figure that years ago was amazing for its time. But, uh, and just hear me out on this one, wouldn't it be better if they designed a whole new figure? Because here's the thing, here's the negative I have of this robot mode. Every flaw, gripe, and nitpick I have of this figure has been solved on other figures that came well before it, both officially and from third party. The classic Seeker is one of the first molds in the Uniclass Serations line, and I don't see Astrotrain being reused with some minor tweaks, nor the Voyager Prime with some minor tweaks. Hot Rod? Bumblebee? Grimlock? Nope, none of that, but I guess Starscream and Ramjet were considered so ahead of their time they get some minor alterations and sold as if they were the same quality as the likes of Siege or the rest of the Earthrise. Like, let's work our way up. The feet have these two pieces that clamshell up, look very loosely based on engines that aren't even the right jet, and don't even have 5mm ports to accept blast effects. Solution? Reveal the shield jazz and Titans return Blitzwing. First off, have the feet like RTS jazz and that the heel can fold into the toes. And when transformed like this, it'll look like Titans return Blitzwing feet, whose transformation was instead of having the fronts of the legs open, to open the back of the legs like a door and have the entirety of the foot rotate in and have the thighs work the exact same way and look at that, we get a fully transformed engine that had both toe and heel support, while looking like the proper engine for the plane, much like how the classic Seekers had accurate engines. I cannot fathom why they figured using a crotch plate here would look great, especially after the epic hip joints that were the Siege Starscream and Earthrise Optimus. I love these types of joints as they allow for such a range of movement while still looking aesthetically accurate for the most part, but nope, we're stuck with this, which is stupid boring. They didn't address the wings, which flop about like a loose tarp in a hurricane, and annoyingly enough there's a slot to accept a tab, but was a hinge one added to the wing, or at the very least added to the wing itself? Ha! No! I don't even know why these slots are present, considering they don't do anything unless it was to emulate the 15-year-old model, in which case they're present because that's the only place the hinge for the shoulder can go. But like, you know, 5 minutes in Blender, 6 minutes on a printer, someone gets staples on the horn because that was easy. And look at that, now you can hang the whole figure off the wing and it won't fly off anywhere. 
And now the biggest defender of it all, the nose cone hanging off the back. Because not only is this just an aesthetically an eyesore, it blocks access to the 5mm port back here, which I like to use to suspend figures in my rig. So for me, personally, it was a lot more of an irritation than just, blech, that's ugly. Like 15 years ago, we saw this and said, hey, that's pretty rad. Nowadays, it's been done three different times by three different companies at legend scale, and the only Voyager scale offering is the official one that, again, can't stress this enough, decided to base this off a 15-year-old design that ends up with all this wasted space in the chest where they very easily could have stored the nose cone. Literally, just take the nose, split it apart, fold in the tip for clearance, fold the nose on in, and there, no more nose cone drapes on the back, no more chest gap, it's all fixed. Irritatingly enough, the nose cone wasn't even designed so that we could just pull it off either. Like, I tore the stair star screen apart just to look at how it all goes together, and the way it's designed is that the nose cone can only come off if you tear it apart, angle it a certain way, and then off it snaps. I'm not sure why after the options we provided in the vein of Earthrise Prime's butt flap or the entirety of alt mode siege star scream that we're now forced into having it this way with no way to remove it for those that don't mind parts forming, which is effectively going to ruin what wasn't even a problem for the chug coneheads. But now they get to deal with it because 15 year old design with slight improvements that gets beaten out in terms of good points by other figures in the same wave. Like, all of these figures get to feature some great posability with very clever engineering aspects to them, and then this, a 15-year-old Voyager secret mold that gets to be the runt of the litter. As far as individually, apart from the mold itself goes, they do fairly well aesthetically. Starscream looks as much as Starscream as you'd expect, and I'm super glad they went with the grey this time instead of the white that Starscreams get to be a toss-up of what they end up being, with the blues and reds exactly where and what they need to be. Skywarp looks way better in person than in photos, as all the black just seems to absorb light like a singularity, but against that purple, it looks righteously awesome, and definitely suits the whole teleportation stick he's known for. And then Thundercracker. He's fine. Not to rag on the whole blue thing again, but I just prefer the Generations, the Siege, the blue on Siege Mirage, or Prime's Leg, or on Lynx, or... I don't know, there's just better blues out here. But we get this desaturated baby blue with a slight tinge of green, and it's just not for me. If you like it, that's great, I'm happy for you. Articulation features a ball-jointed spinny head for all kinds of sick action in the head mobility department. Wings can flap back for more of a dynamic look to them. Shoulders move out. Elbows bend just past 90, which is odd considering how over-engineered they are that they can only do that much. Bicep and shoulder rotation. Crotch plate moves so we can move the legs, and also to show us where that cut out of the main body went from the nose cone, completely negating any and all waist rotation. Legs can move that far up, far less than the crotch plate can, and the butt flap gets in the way of any backward movement. Which is kind of silly, considering this pin is here to let the back move, but the flap, like in the generations, is molded into the body, and it'd be a shame to have to change that. Legs move out, but not all the way. Thighs rotate, and knees actually move quite a fair bit. And then ankles pivot a little bit with the stabilizers and elevators attached to said pivot, which I feel can look a little weird at times. And finally, 5mm ports in the heels. Not the feet, the heels. Like normally, I don't care about ports in the feet, as it's usually used for like weaponizers and pretending Voyager figures or leader class and all that, but this is the Seekers, man. Thrusters in the feet is their claim to fame. And to see the whole effect being accomplished in the heels is just so weird looking. Looking at straight on, I guess, isn't so bad, but like... You compare this to something like the Siege Seeker, which just pulled off the thruster feet so nicely, and it leaves a little bit to be desired. For size comparison, Earthrise Wave 1, which, as far as robots go, is decently sized. For other Autobots, we have Siege Omega Supreme, Siege Jetfire, Earthrise Smokescreen, Siege Mirage, Generations Warpath, Titans Return Sea Spray, Mech Fans Toys Huffer, and Titans Return Bumblebee. On the Decepticon side of things, we have Siege Jetfire, Custom Siege Megatron, Custom Siege Soundwave, Siege Shockwave, Masterpiece Frumble, Masterpiece Buzzbeak, or Laser Saw, take your pick, Earthrise Villains Pack, Mech Fans Toys KO Oversized Reflector, Prime Wars Trilogy Insecticons, KO Undersized Devastator, the other MP Cassettes, Rainmakers, and just look at all this. All the Season 1 figures majority of which came out in the last two years, some of which four years ago. Regardless, within five years, we had the entirety of Season 1 expressed in accurate robot scaling, not including my choice of Devastator, of course, but still, this is crazy to see all this in one image. To see the main five, to see the four figureheads in the Decepticon, it's just something I thought I'd never, ever see outside of the Masterpiece line, especially through official methods. And finally, resize Earthrise figures at your HO scale using these vehicle modes I have for them at reference. If you're ever curious about what these should all be in relation to each other, 
There's your answer. And my answer too. This is probably one of my favorite composited images I've ever done. So that was my review for the Earth Rice Seekers. Are they great figures? No. I went into this review happy with them because this is exactly what I wanted in terms of a standard scaled Seeker. I loved the classic Seeker back in its heyday, and felt things were just better overall from a design perspective than, say, MP11 in some regard. Just give me a Voyager upscaled version of that. What could go wrong? Well, a lot apparently. So many more interesting things have been done with the Seekers at all kinds of price points and sizes in the past 15 years, and engineering tricks have come a long way since 2006. And it shows. Every single one of the flaws of this design has presented itself in some fashion or another while making this review. Limitations that figures within the same wave just don't have to deal with. And at the end of the day, it really feels underwhelming to look at this and go, Yep, that came out in 2020. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow. Well, that was a review, wasn't it? Please like, comment, subscribe, and do the thing where you do the Patreon thing if you want. I'm not forcing you to. So yeah, this review was a thing. I was excited to get this figure when it was first announced, and I just ended up disappointed the more I reviewed it. But hey, it's 2021 now, and we got a whole bunch of more Earthrise going on. But I mean, at least with this review, I finally finished Wave 1. So I mean, that's a cool thing. Already?